the division leading Cincinnati Reds where it went right. Let's do some digging in. This is a club off a 100 loss season. Remember they let Nick Castellanos go into free agency. They traded Jesse Winker then traded the rest of their pitching core including their ace Luis Castillo. At the time it seemed like they were spinning their wheels low budget going nowhere Oh, the Reds but things were happening off the hot stove radar. The Reds rebuild has been stunningly fast. That can happen when you have a bumper crop of young players. The Reds are 26th in payroll but they now have six players six none of whom has played more than 80 games in a single season who are now regulars and playing like future stars. Let's go through them all. There's six of them. If Matt McClain was the one guy brought up that alone would be a successful draft and develop a shortstop out of UCLA. McClain was the Reds first round draft pick in 2021. He now has a 137 OPS plus is playing plus defense in most seasons. That's the rookie of the year. But he has competition within his own club. Ellie De La Cruz was signed in the Dominican Republic when he was 16 years old in 2018. Five years later he's 21 looks like a superstar now because McLean plays shortstop Dela Cruz has been playing third base three of the six came over in trades Spencer Steer plays first and third base he's 25 former third round pick in 2019 Steer came over in the Tyler Molly trade with the twins Jake Fraley meantime is the oldest of the bunch at 28 the corner outfielder came over in the Jesse Winker trade with the Mariners. Fraley was a second round pick with the Rays in 2016 a player we like on this show good process at the plate. Will Benson is 25. He is a former first round pick with Cleveland in 2016. He came over in a trade for outfielder Justin Boyd last year. Boyd is still in high A ball. Benson is kind of the post hype prospect and now he's thriving. Then there's center fielder T.J. Friedel. Friedel is now 27 came up the old fashioned way an undrafted free agent. The Reds believed in him gave him a good deal for a player to bypass the draft and he spent six years in the Reds minor league system six years. He's not a power hitter but he's a good player with a track record of success. So that's a hodgepodge of acquisitions right for a club that had a rookie of the year two years ago in Jonathan India. So there's some young talent there already. One came in the draft. One was a domestic free agent. One was an international free agent and three came over in trades. This is the main point I'm saying in this whole thing. I want to point out how rare it is to add even two good position players onto your major league starting lineup in a given year. This is basically six rookie or second year players hitting in one shot. They don't have to be all stars. If you add six above average position players in one year you're going to be a completely different club and they are all above average by the way. Here are the six here are their ages and here's their weighted runs created plus 100 is league average. McLean leads the way. That's a 139 weighted runs created plus. That's the second best hitting for a shortstop in the game only behind Corey Seager. That's it. Everyone else is above league average and by the way 100 is league average. They're well above league average. So maybe all this levels off. We don't know. But it's not just one big number like hey we got this one star the second guy. It's everybody that's a 118 Dela Cruz he's going to get better. Most everyone's around 120. That's good production. By the way the Mets and Yankees would sign up for this kind of production right now. So maybe the hitting stays maybe it doesn't. But one thing we know this is the fastest team in the major leagues. Mike Petriello wrote about this in MLB.com recently. The Reds position player team went from the fifth oldest to the fifth youngest in one year. So right now the Reds are fifth in baseball and base running runs second in stolen bases only to the Rays stealing at an 80 percent success rate second only to the Diamondbacks and extra bases taken percentage and that's with De La Cruz the fastest man in the majors just called up since the start of June they have 20 more 24 more stolen bases than any other club. All right. One last thing the overall spending you can tell a lot about a club looking at the payroll and top salaries all the way down. How many guys over 30 million. How many over 20 million. How many over 15 million Reds. It's a little simpler. I've never seen anything like this. Joey Votto the last link to the 97 red win Reds of a decade ago 25 million and then a bit of a drop off. Look at this. No one over 3 million three players in the 2 million range Hunter Green who signed an extension doesn't really make big money for three or four more years. 
All of the six players we mentioned, you don't see them there, right? They make under a million dollars a year. So the club is 26th in payroll, and the challenge will be, it's again, the idea isn't to not pay guys. You want to identify who you want long term and lock them up while you can. That's phase two. But let's acknowledge the Reds have crushed phase one.